Howdy everybody, Coleman Alderson here for GardensAll.com. Welcome to this episode where we're going to explore how to enhance the planting area in our little cattle panel greenhouse. And it took a bit of research, a bit of drawing, doing a scale drawing and all that, to figure out maybe the best thing to do is to add to this shelf work here. As you can see, it's about 16 inches and underneath here is space to put our larger potted plants. You might be able to see those down in there. That's uh, our longevity spinach, Gyanera procumbens there that we're growing through the winter. And we have sort of a success story. We have some larger plants like these. Uh, let's see, some that are actually almost ready, almost ready to be picked, you see? And the, the issue, just a second, the issue is it'd be nice to come in here and have, you know, more or less a garden where we can come in and pick our, um, our vegetables. It's just too cold. It's beginning of February. It's just a little too cold to be setting them out and uh, worrying about covering them and uncovering and all that when we have this beautiful growing environment here where it rarely goes below 45 degrees. So the the solution that I came up with was to install a gutter type, window box type um, unit here along this, this shelf. And it's a good height, it's just above waist height. We're gonna fill it with soil and we're gonna plant some of these plants that are coming on really, really strong and just line them up so we'll have an easy at hand uh, way of harvesting. I know some folks may not agree with PVC as a material. Um, it does supposedly have a little bit of leaching qualities to it, but upon researching it further, I found that, uh, well, personally, I, I don't think it's, it's gonna be that, uh, that much of a problem. Um, it is a problem when it gets really warmed up and hot, like uh, running hot water through it and stuff. It could leach out a bit, but for our purposes here, I think it's gonna work fine. And uh, it certainly is inexpensive. I think I got all of these materials for about 30 bucks in, in terms of a, a long run. This is about an eight foot run of gutter um, at the local big store. Uh, and uh, it's pretty simple to work with, but I wanted to give you all a couple points as I studied what was going on um, online. And one of the first things was this material it's pretty thick and it you, you don't have to, you could try sawing it and I tried that first of all sawing and it just tore it up in fact it cracked it here and I was really concerned that uh, we might lose some run on our um, our initial gutter here but what I discovered was using heavy duty you could probably use a heavier duty uh, tin snip but I used these and very carefully cut on through. It'd be a little bit of a task with, um, say, a utility blade knife like that to, uh, to cut through this. I suppose you could try using a, um, a powered saw like we tried using a, a, uh, what they call, a, what do you call those things? A sawzall, yeah. And it just, it just kept vibrating and it actually broke it in a section. So that didn't work. Maybe a finer saw like a, a jigsaw or something and this thing held tightly in place. It's just an odd shape to be, you know, finding a way of securing it. So what really worked out the best was uh, just using these snips here and they go right through it. And uh, you, can, you can cut and then you can trim it up so it's nice and even. The other thing had to figure this out in the store because the uh, illustrations didn't didn't actually show but what you want to do is use these mounting brackets and I was trying to figure out well how do you figure it in there and then you know the light came on and what you need to do is this is this is going to be the flat side or the the side that would be against the house right and this is this is the front that's going to stick out so you kind of line those up and this tab here, this right here, is gonna go in behind here, and you can see you have cutouts, right? You have one here in the back, right there, 
and you have one here right in here in, in, in the front. And what you're going to try to do is slip this on so that as you put it in here, it's going to line up with these cutouts. And it's a little tedious, but this stuff is flexible. And if you can get the front, front is a little harder to start, but then it slips on just like that, you see? And then you move it to a position which should be predetermined. I put the ones for this long run on uh, two foot centers. I figured that's gonna be enough. Also, we took a drill and drilled three sixteenths inch holes at six inch intervals. I have no idea whether that's gonna be adequate or enough, but I figure if it's not, uh, I don't think it's going to be too much, but if it's not enough for good drainage, you can always come back in and drill some intermediate holes there. So that isn't a big issue. So once you get this on, then you have end caps, which um, you've got to figure out how they match up. They come to in a pair or should, and you want it to, you see how, how this is shaped like that? You, you want that same kind of shape at either end. So make sure when you get these, you have one for one end and one for the other. I don't think it'll work very well if you don't use these end caps uh, and they're not all that expensive. So they just kind of slip on, then you have to bend and push a little bit and maybe wrap it a little bit. But uh, they do go on and, and they form a real, you know, like a gutter, okay? So now we're at the stage where I went ahead and ran in, what, oh yeah, I should explain. Once you get the brackets on there, all of them that you'll need, right, before you put those end caps on, um, this is the way it's going to sit. This will be against the fascia or the board or whatever you're using, and they're very clever. They have a little hole here, right there, where you take a screw, and the screw's going to go in and drive into the material in the back. So it's just a, I'm just using a Phillips head. This is just a regular wood screw that's coated. Um, they do make stainless steel screws for this sort of thing, but hey, this works. So um, that's basically it, and that's what I'll be doing here as I finish off getting this thing mounted. And of course, I figured, gee, it'd be a, a lot easier doing this before it's filled with dirt than after. So this is more or less phase one, and in just a minute, I'll catch up with you guys and we'll look at uh, filling in the dirt process. And um, we are inserting a nice, beautiful organic soil mix into our gutter frame here, into the gutters. And we're using, again, our favorite material is the black gold. And this is raised bed and potting mix. Works really good. It has some nutrients already built into it to get plants up and growing. And it's, it's just a process. We don't want to get it, we don't want to get it too full. I'm, <laughs> this is the broken end of a shovel, of spade. Um, but we want to, some of this was already moist, but we'll have to wet this down a little bit and then when we start putting our plants in here, uh, water them in again and um, go from there. But this looks like a pretty good system. Of course, you gotta make sure don't, don't skimp on the, um, the bracket supports because you can get a, a, if you put too much weight, gets too heavy, these things can sag or might even break off with too much weight. It's not just like for you know, a rain gutter, it's not just water it's holding, it's uh, saturated soil. So that's a, quite a bit heavier. Just got to take a precaution, making sure you spend that little bit of extra money to get enough brackets to support this thing really well. And uh, I'll be back with you once we get everything planted. It's uh, no big trick. We're going to just take what we have here that's growing really well and set it in here and uh, water them in and let them grow. So we're back with you guys. Just uh, wondered, probably you guys are thinking that, uh, you know, what are we planting in this gutter garden here and it's nothing that's going to grow big it's it's nothing like uh, squash or cabbage or anything like that it's all leafy greens and usually they tend to be pretty compact just think of like salad right 
we're growing one of our favorites, which is a perpetual spinach. It has, um, it's not a real spinach, it's actually a, a form of chard. And if you can't find it in, in a catalog, just look up uh, Swiss chard and it is a form of that. But it actually does have qualities that it tastes like spinach. Plus, I like it better than spinach. We've not had that great of luck with spinach. It keeps bolting and stuff. So we, we have moved on to perpetual spinach, which indeed lives up to its name because we've grown it in the fall, we've grown it in the winter, we've grown it into the spring and into the summer even. And um, this is just one planting, right? So we're big fans of perpetual spinach. That's one of them. The other, I, I don't know whether you can see it here or not, but it's called, um, it looks like dandelion, but it's really not. It's, um, it's, it's Italico Rosso. And it's actually, you know, you, you find it in, in um, it's sort of related to the chicory, what is a chicory. And it has a rather, nicer taste than just a typical dandelion but we're growing that we enjoy it. it has a beautiful red stem on it and then we have some endive which is basically batavian heart endive which we love and it forms a nice little head and also in some cases you'll you'll get some endive and uh, radicchio type materials that will look like um, little heads and we're trying to grow those too but all of these are basic salad green type materials. We're going to use them for salads, or we might cut them up and use them for, for greens occasionally cooked. But this is what we're planting in here, and uh, we're going to see if we this uh, nice little gutter garden will carry us through. As I go, I'm very careful about watering in and making sure these little guys don't get too shocked moving to a new location. We will um, keep you all posted on how this thing is going and let you know as we move along. But for now, this is Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. Take care. Oh, before we leave, let me, let me say this. If you go up onto the YouTube channel, our channel, you can go down to the right corner and click there to subscribe. You guys probably know all about this. And you can also go up, there's a little bell up in the right-hand corner if you click on that, then you can receive alerts and notifications for uh, new stuff that's coming out from us. So, Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. So long. So, here we are, looking forward to this wonderful garden gutter garden here. And all the plants that we set in. All our star players are here on the final curtain call. And we look forward to walking out into our greenhouse and harvesting wonderful salads very soon in the future. You all take good care. Be safe. So long.